if I had to date, if I had to be single 18 years to go through to get to her, then that was the best thing for me. Oh, yeah. Put that clip in a Valentine. Yeah, there. because seriously, <laughs> she is she is the best person I've ever met. Oh. Yeah. Did she grow up in uh, uh, Dallas? She grew up in Dallas. She grew up in South Dallas proper. She, uh, the Oak she, Cliff area? No, no, because in the black community, South Dallas means near the Fred Park. When, ah. when they talk on the news about South Dallas, they're talking about Duncanville. They talking, they're talking about the southern part of town. Uh -huh. And every time they said it, we said, that's not South Dallas. That's the southern part of Dallas. Uh -huh. South Dallas is Martin Luther King Boulevard, Malcolm X. It's Pennsylvania Avenue. It's part of the Fair Park. That's South Dallas uh -huh. to the black community. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, it's the heart. Interestingly enough, when I lived in Corsicana, I had this Volkswagen. So I drive, and I had to go past South Dallas to go to my aunt and uncle's house because they lived in North Dallas. They lived in Hamilton Park, Forest Lane, uh, Central Expressway. So every time I came home, I'd drive through South Dallas and I'd roll down the window and say, Welcome back, back! I just screamed out loud. <laughs> because even though my old neighborhood had changed, I, I seldom went to my old neighborhood. But South Dallas was more, I felt more connected to South Dallas than probably any other part of Dallas. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it <laughs> was like my old community. Uh, they had shops, stores, barbershops, movie theaters. I mean, they were all, that was the black experience there. Hmm. Did, uh, did she, were, were her experiences similar to yours in no. the neighborhood? You know? Carolyn's experiences were quite different in that she went, she went to school in her neighborhood all her life. She went, to elementary, where she lived, she could walk, and she did. She walked to elementary school, she walked to junior high, and she walked to high school. She just, she lived that close to all three schools. Uh, whereas, after the seventh grade, I went to school outside of my community. Mm -hmm. Pretty best out, yeah. Yeah, and so her community, her, her experience was different with all black schools, uh, but like, me, she was involved in a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, whatever they were, brownies, Girl Scots, all that stuff. But even though that was a, that was probably a black experience. Um, had a, went, had a year of college, then she got homesick, came home. She went to Texas Southern University. Uh, her experience was that's what she knew. She probably would have gone to Prairie View or Texas Southern, you know, historical black college. Whereas my experience was different. I didn't want to do that. Mm -hmm. I already knew what that was like. Mm -hmm. So, um, Did a lot of the people who went to college from your neighborhood, um, uh, uh, you said that your preacher actually was on the faculty of Bishop. Was, mm -hmm. that, was that one of the places that people went or no? Yeah, because for us, for most of my friends who have gone on and went to college, we went to college away from town, out of the city. Yeah, so that, door, to get out. that door was open, so why not go through? Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, majority of my friends either went to Texas Women's, uh, University of North Texas. I had friends in my class, best friends who went to Saul Ross, <coughs> uh, UT, SMU. Um, some friends, yeah, some did go to SMU. I, that wasn't anything I wanted to do because I would have felt like a fish out of water at SMU. Even though, <laughs> even though I could technically ride my bicycles, as if you, we live near my neighborhood. One street over is Highland Park. Mm -hmm. We butted up to Highland Park. As a matter of fact, we would drive and bo as, as Boy Scouts, we would have to sell jamboree tickets uh, to earn merit badges. What's interesting is that we could try to sell them in, in the black neighborhood, but we understood that most people didn't grow up in Boy Scouts and they didn't really get it. Mm -hmm. And so this is this is wild. But my friends and I would stand and we'd practice our little speech. Hi, I'm Daryl Peace. I'm a member of Troop 158. And I'm selling jamboree tickets um, to earn their badge. We'd love to know if you'd like to purchase one. They're only 50 cents. Mm -hmm. And we'd ride our bikes over to Hallow Park, sell all our jamboree tickets, come back home. <laughs> But you're and you're in your Boy Scout uniforms. So you're not getting hassled by no, cops or no. We're in our Boy Scout uniforms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Yep. They say, what are the black kids doing on neighborhood? What yep. are the Boy Scouts? They're yep. good ones. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they all do that. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Well, we did, um, I know that uh, uh, we go to the wealthier neighborhoods to trick or treat. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we didn't. We just stayed. We stayed in the neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. So. The Jamboree tickets, though. Yeah, the Jamboree, yeah. The jamboree, yeah. <laughs> when you were here at ET, what kind of reception did you get when you went into the classrooms for your coursework from the students and the professors? You were in the minority. Uh, no one really gave me a difficult time. I didn't actually, I never experienced any, anything out of the ordinary. I'm reading in, uh, actually, uh, I'm wondering if she might have been a member of this asset group. Uh, it's an uh, oral history taken in the early 70s of a, a student uh, who <clears throat> uh, said that uh, that uh, she noticed and that she experienced some herself uh, that they, she'd have a, a pretty wide uh, area of empty seats around her in the back. They never noticed anything like that. Well, for me, see, I don't remember any yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. uh, if it, for me, it didn't happen because I would remember it. Yeah, you would. I would remember it. I would have noticed it. it. Yeah. Uh, um, and I came as a freshman in 70. Uh, and I was pretty studious. I, didn't, I wasn't there to be anybody's friend. Mm -hmm. the, all my instructors were bare. Mm -hmm. um, I personally didn't have any of those kinds of experiences. I think she might have actually started in the in the early days. I think maybe I wonder if she might have been a graduate student at that point. Mm -hmm. um, maybe that's like maybe that was the way it used to be. Were there were were people smoking in there at the time? Was the uh, classroom full of smoke? That's what I was here. I, no, I don't remember that. No, no. no. Did you and your fraternity brothers uh, participate in the in the Western Week and Orphans Day and no. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, that just wasn't us. Yeah. yeah. It's too goofy here. <laughs> yeah, um, from my vantage point, um, everything that we grew up on knowing, for, 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 particularly for somebody who's urban like me, the only the only experience I had with Westerns were on TV, and there were no blacks in the Westerns on TV. Yeah, well Jim was just talking about a, a, a picture of the, is it the Delta? Is that I don't know if it was Kennedy? Deltas or the Kappas. Um, they did what was called Old South it was the, it was the Week, it was the K and they dress up in Confederate uniforms. Yeah, and we stopped them from doing it. You did? Okay. Well, this picture, Jim said that there's a picture of a per person in blackface with a slave sign around his neck. Yeah, that yes. might have... That was probably in the 50s, yeah. early 60s, yeah. and I think the blacks protested yeah, that, we, that event. Yeah, in the, in, in the old yearbooks, I, you know, because we have copies of all of them, I look and I see some things that happened before. African Americans were here, and I just shake my head and said that never would have happened. The KAs did Old South Week when I was here. The Omega Psi Phi fraternity, the Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity, and the Alpha Phi Alpha fraternity banded together and raised hell and stopped it. What? We physically stopped it. Oh, you did? Now, how did that happen? We confronted them. We stopped their parade. And we went to the administration and said, you know what? We know that this has meaning and significance to them, but it has meaning and significance to us, and it is not right. So, if you do it again, there will be trouble. Who were you, what, and did it stop? It stopped. Who were you approaching? Who did you guys approach? It we approached the fraternity. The They're fraternity. the ones who did it. Oh, okay, so you didn't have to approach the fraternity.